hello everyone and welcome back to the channel so today's video is going to be a discussion video which is something i don't do very often and this is the, the third time i've tried to record this video just because the other two times i wanted to try and kind of shorten the video length because it was reaching about half an hour but i've come to the conclusion that discussion videos they can't really be shortened and i really enjoy doing these so today's video is long overdue and by that i mean about five months overdue and this is talking about the monterey bay aquarium's newest exhibit that is coming in 2022 well presumably 2022 into the deep exploring our undiscovered oceans and this is going to be the world's first large-scale deep sea exhibit and what that means is aquariums mostly in california and japan are the only places that have actually displayed uh, deep sea life before are only displaying them at maybe a couple tanks at a time i think the most i've seen is probably six or so and this was a long time ago at the aquarium of the pacific when they had their own deep sea exhibit but those were some of the more common deep sea animals such as flashlight fish and giant isopods well the monterey bay's new exhibit is going to house animals that are either the first time they've been on display in the world or the first time they've been on display in the u.s so this is going to be probably my favorite exhibit ever um at my favorite aquarium and that is what we're going to be discussing about today now the four main topics i would like to go over today are which exhibit is this replacing because this is a special exhibitation the layout of the exhibit so how the exhibit is kind of laid out the animals that are going to presumably be in the exhibit and the kind of time frame that we could see this exhibit opening so let's jump right into topic one so topic one which exhibit is this going to be replacing so if you've been to the aquarium within the past i'd say five years you would have probably seen the viva baja exhibit which is kind of their california coast to mexico coast exhibit displaying different tropical animals and even including some tortoises lizards snakes and scorpions but unfortunately like a lot of the other special exhibitations this one after its four year mark is unfortunately coming to a close and if you've never been to the monterey bay aquarium or you don't know about their special exhibitations the special exhibitations usually only last about four years or so and these usually focus on kind of either one area or one certain animal group such as i know i know they had uh some special exhibitations about different seahorses and different jellyfish because i was able to go to those there are some exceptions though such as the tentacles exhibit which i'll get into a little later uh that is reaching now it's i think seventh year mark at the aquarium and that exhibit basically focuses on the different cuttlefish octopus squid and nautilus and last year 2020 towards august i believe they closed off viva baja and started to take it down and the reason i know this is because back in 2018 if you were subscribed to their well if you were a member at that time you would have probably gotten a particular catalog with this information about viva baja closing and the new deep sea exhibit that's coming in and there was some information in here that isn't revealed in the new york times article which i'll link below in the description and the comment section which is where i'm getting a lot of this information from that was released back in september but that was kind of like a members exclusive look and kind of a sneak peek at what was to come so this exhibit is going to be replacing viva baja something that wasn't very interesting to me well some of the exhibits in there were pretty nice but it just didn't feel as unique to the other exhibits they have so i'm not particularly sad about viva baja going but if you are then i feel you as some of the other exhibits that i really liked have also gone and returned but fortunately this is making space for possibly the greatest exhibit in the u.s next to the georgia crimes ocean voyager so let's dive right into topic two of how the exhibit is going to be laid out so right now on your screen you can see a picture of what is presumably going to be the full layout of the exhibit but for right now i'm just going to go by the different i guess areas 
So starting off with that, we have the entrance and walking down this hallway, you see a lot of curvatures, which I believe are going to be LED screens, kind of showing the different layers of the ocean. Like you have the, I believe it's called the sunlight zone. And then you have the twilight zone, which is kind of the layer between the sunlight zone. And then you have the midnight zone, which is the bottom of the ocean. So I guess is that this is going to show you kind of descending down to the midnight zone. And after you reach there, you get down to the area called down to the deep. And over here, we can see from the other pictures that are around this, what I believe is a full scale replica of the submarines they actually use to go down into the midnight zone for periods at a, uh, at a time. And this is pretty cool since it actually gives you kind of a full scale, I guess, uh, life size model of uh, what the researchers actually use to go down to the midnight zone. And from right now, that is kind of the only thing that I can see. Uh, this is, there are no zoomed in pictures of this. So when I zoom in, the quality, it gets kind of grainy. So I'm sorry if I get some of the things wrong. But then again, this is all speculation as none of this is pretty much, well, I'm, this layout is confirmed. Uh, things can always change, of course, since there's another year to go, but this is kind of just my thoughts and predictions about what this is actually going to uh, look like. And after you get down to the down to the deep section, there is some text over here, but I can't read that. Uh, it's too small and the quality is not the greatest. You get to this circular room, which from the pictures around, which I will get to later, these are the kind of, I guess it's a LED room. So they have different LED screens playing what I think are going to be different videos of the different sea creatures. And th these three in particular are, I guess, circular LED screens from the pictures I could see. And if you did not know, the Monterey Bay Aquarium is actually working with the Research Institute and BARI, which stands for the Monterey Bay Aquarium Research Institute, uh, to actually make this exhibit happen. And they are known for making a lot of new discoveries in the deep sea as well as having some of the greatest quality videos of animals that live in the deep sea. So they are the ones that are collecting this and the Monterey Bay Aquarium are, is the place that is going to be housing them for display. So after you get to the kind of circular room with the LED screens, you get to this section called the Midwater Zone. And this is where you'll start to see the different animals on display. And this section is going to house the animals that basically live in the abyss. I don't believe they ever see the sea floor. They just live and basically avoid their entire life. So you can tell the different tanks in here based on that they are marked with blue. And some of these I can not decipher whether they are actually tanks or not since some of them are really light blue and i'm not exactly sure if those are our tanks but in here we can see at least one two three four possibly a, f a fifth and sixth tank but right now we do know that there are at least four tanks and i'll get to this in the next section on what animals they're going to be displaying but these are going to be uh animals that just like I mentioned before, lived their entire life in a void. And this is going to be really interesting to see how they interact in this aquarium environment. And after that, you walk into this other section, which I can't make out what these three things are. Uh, these the three things are, I'm sorry. Uh, they could be different machines possibly, but again, I'm not exactly sure. And over here, you could possibly see what is possibly another tank. But looking at the kind of galleries of this exhibit, I don't believe it is since there are no animal, uh, I guess, plans for that that I have seen labeled. But then again, that is something that they might not have revealed yet. But after you walk through there, you walk into the next room is the sea floor and now these are animals from looking at the pictures that live kind of close to the sea floor 
Uh, and then the next room over is the animals that do live on the seafloor. But this room, I believe, are, is a mixture of animals that live kind of in the open water while also sometimes traveling down to the seafloor. But in here, we can at least see one, two, three, four, five, six different tanks in this room. I'm not sure what this kind of area over here is. It might be the filtration room, although it doesn't look very likely since we can see the different filtration uh, places kind of behind the walls. So this is going to be really interesting to see what this turns out to be. And over here we see some benches, but once you walk throughout that room, you end up getting to some more tanks, which are in a hallway. And I'm not exactly sure what is going to be in these tanks since the pictures on the wall didn't show anything for them. Although there is a really interesting concept. No way, actually the pictures on the wall did show some of them, but we can see three more tanks over here. There are two built into the wall and then there's kind of a bowfront style tank. And this bowfront style tank is kind of the one I want to focus on in the next section. And after this, there is kind of a indent into the wall, which I have some questions about, which I have my own theories for, which I'll get into the next section of this video. But over here, we have the main display, in my opinion, of this new gallery. And this is going to be what is called the Whale Falls. And basically what this is, is a, I don't think it's a life-size replica because I'm guessing that would be too big, but this is a replica of a whale skeleton. And if you do not know, whales, once they pass in the sunlight zone, they end up going all the way down through the different layers of the ocean. And then once they hit the sea floor, they end up decomposing and that attracts a buffet of different animals and these are different hot spots for new life to be discovered by scientists so this tank is a, what in my opinion going to be a key possibly the uh i guess the biggest i'm not sure the what the word is oh sorry i'm getting my words mixed up but this part over here seems like it will be the biggest tank in the exhibit and okay i got the word the coolest exhibit possibly based on the stocking that is presumably going to be in this tank and then after you walk through there we have what i think are two smaller tanks that are almost connected but they look like a cube tank and a rectangular tank i'm not sure what's going to be in those since i didn't see any pictures indicating uh what could be in there but that could be revealed later on excuse me and then once you walk through there, we have the last room in the gallery, which is the new discoveries. And this could be another tank, although I don't believe it is just because of how weirdly shaped it is, considering that it looks like a piece of the wall is kind of going into it. And it doesn't look like a ton of space, but then again, I could be wrong. Uh, these are just my own theories, but this room, I believe is going to showcase a lot of the modern day discoveries possibly made within the last decade or so by Mbari and after you walk through there that is the end of the exhibit. So very exciting stuff, a very interesting layout as a lot of these rooms are circular and kind of have a weird design to them but this is meant to kind of teleport you to the bottom of the sea and from the pictures i've seen of the exhibit it looks like they're kind of going for designs on the wall to make you feel like that you are actually in the midnight zone with different rock structures and stuff on the wall so this layout could be indicating that but with that out of the way let's move on to the most exciting and probably the longest section of this video what animals could we expect to see in this exhibit so now starting off with the midwater section we can see that there are planning to be six different creatures in here and basically most of them are jellyfish so over here we see the bloody belly comb jelly and i believe this is going to be the first time in the world that this jellyfish is going to be on display and we can actually see what are presumably going to be the different tanks that they'll be housed in and 
from the story in the New York Times article, it seemed like housing and figuring out the key to keeping the Bloody Belly Calm Jelly alive in uh, aquariums took a long time as they said that even raising the water temperature by a couple degrees ended up metaphorically dis having it disintegrate and it seemed like for the past year or so they have finally cracked the code to housing it and this is going to be a super awesome animal to see as if you've seen video of these in the deep sea you know that they are a super beautiful animal and it's going to be really awesome to finally see them on display and surrounding them we have what is looking like some sort of sea nettle and two other i think short tentacle jellyfish of some sort and then over here we have a type of tinafore is what i'm seeing and that is going to be housed in this circular tank and below that we have i believe is i forgot what the creature is called i'll put the name up on the screen but i actually just saw this in a um sci show collaboration uh that they did with ambari today and it's basically an animal that creates a kind of i guess house out of its own snot which is really interesting and that's gonna be really cool to see on display and i just want to take a minute to look at the exhibit uh layout here as we see a lot of chrysal tanks and obviously the gallery is going to be super dark so filming might be a little bit of a challenge but there's always a way and this one tank over here looks like a globe of some sort and if that is true then this might be one of the only kind of jellyfish globes in the world since one of my local aquariums actually is i believe the second or third place in the world to have it but actually this doesn't look like a globe it's just kind of uh, well it doesn't have the same design as the moon jellyfish globes but this does look like a globe shaped tank which is going to be super interesting to see in real life how this works and now after going through the midwater section you get to the section called the muddy plains and if you remember from the last section this is the place that has a lot of the more individual tanks of the things that kind of live both in the midwaters and the sea floor so looking at the different kind of i guess pictures we can see that there are going to be two species of fish, one species of cephalopod, one species of, I think that's a underwater worm of some sort. And I think this is some sort of deep sea sponge and a deep sea feather star. So I want to focus on the fish and the cephalopod first of all, because I'm assuming that one of these two is the salmon snailfish and what i mean by that is back in 2019 the aquarium actually received a salmon snailfish from i believe japan and they have been housing it for the past two years or so and it's been doing really well and this gallery might be the time for it to kind of display itself to the world and if i'm not mistaken this will be the first time in the u.s any sort of snailfish has been on display the other fish down here the one that looks like it is resting up against some rocks looks like it could be some sort of deep sea anglerfish and not the anglerfish that like to hang out in the waters i'm thinking more of kind of a deep sea cousin to the frogfish that we sometimes see in the aquarium hobby and now onto the cephalopod which i'm assuming is some sort of octopus but then again i could be wrong since i know there are there is a species that is a squid but it actually mimics an octopus but this is going to be really interesting as i'm not exactly sure if i've seen it on display before uh when tentacles did open they had the vampire squid the cockeyed squid and another type of squid on display um for the opening weekend for so people that were only there for that weekend or that time frame were able to see it i myself was actually lucky enough to go down there i think 
a couple years ago to actually see two double octopus on display. They weren't the most active, but just seeing them on display and in real life was super awesome. I don't have any photos or videos, unfortunately, as that was a time I didn't have a phone, but I still remember the day that I ended up seeing those and they were super awesome. But this is going to be really interesting as they aren't, I don't think that deep sea cephalopods aren't displayed very often, even in Asia where there are a lot of weird deep sea animals, like just as a couple of days ago, they finally classified this super large bony fish from the midnight zone that was previously unknown to science. So there's a lot of stuff that we're still trying to figure out, but this could be the first time that this particular cephalopod has been on display and I'm super excited to see it. And then over here, the deep sea worm, the, I'm not sure how big it'll be uh, because the photos don't exactly match up to real life uh, scale, but nonetheless, super creepy. And then we have the deep sea feather star, which is going to be super awesome to see as even the sunlight zone feather stars, like the red feather star or the crinoids as they're also called. Uh, I know there's the black one and I think a yellow and green one as well. Even those aren't very uh, commonly displayed at aquariums just because their diet is so complicated and they need very specialized exhibits with a lot of rocks and super high flow. So to see them actually display deep sea ones is going to be super awesome to see. And then the deep sea, I think, sponges or tunicates. Nothing much to say about those. Uh, again, super awesome that we'll actually be able to see these, but not the most interesting creature uh, out of this whole gallery. And then over here, the next couple of pictures is the bowfront tank that I previously showed. This section right now is unnamed, but from the pictures, it looks like this could be a representation. Oh, I'm sorry. Th this section is called the sea mounts. And this is kind of the part on the seafloor where it is very rocky, kind of close to the hydrothermal vents, but not doesn't they don't have the same temperatures. But this part over here is what I'm presuming is going to be a replication of some deep sea coral reefs. And actually, with these few pictures, this proves kind of what I was talking about earlier, how they're going to do some architectural designs of incorporating different rock structures onto the walls of outside of the aquarium. But over here for the sea mounts, we can see what I believe are some deep sea rockfish. And then we have some basket starfish, some sort of deep sea coral, I think. And I forgot what that kind of fish is called, but I saw someone on the r slash aquarium subreddit um, actually post a couple of videos of these saying that they were used in salmon tanks for some reason. Uh, but super weird nonetheless. And then over here, I am not exactly sure what these two are. Uh, I think they're close relatives of the deep sea feather stars, but we'll have to find out and see once the exhibit opens. So nothing much to comment on this. Super awesome to see how this is going to come to life. And Okay, so this is one of the tanks that I really wanted to focus on, and this is the section with the hydrothermal vents. Now, from what it looks like, I don't think this is going to be an actual display, uh, aquarium-wise speaking, but more as kind of an LED room or a video room where it kind of submerges you in the environment of these hydrothermal vents. And the reason I say that it probably won't be an aquarium exhibit or i mean an aquarium itself is because these hydrothermal vents end up getting to i believe 200 degrees celsius if you are directly by the hydrothermal vents which is of course ridiculously hot so i don't think it is going to be an actual aquarium and i don't think we'll be able to see these for quite a while just because the temperature that they're kept at that they have to be kept at if you want to display some of these animals, such as the volcano worms, which live by the hydrothermal vents, you need super duper hot water. And I am almost 100% sure that that water is going to be able to melt through any 
type of thickness of the acrylic that they want to house. So unfortunately, I don't think we'll be able to see any volcano worms or any of the shrimp or crabs that live near the hydrothermal vents just because they have such strong temperature needs. But pretty cool exhibit nonetheless, especially the design that they're going for on the outside with kind of the two worms and the volcano uh, the hydrothermal vents uh, kind of sticking out but that's my thoughts on it and what that could be and moving on to the next section we have the whale falls so this is the tank that has the giant whale skeleton replica and this is the exhibit that excites me the most and the reason is the stalking and first of all we can see that there are going to be at least two species of crab we have the Japanese giant spider crab, which is actually commonly displayed around the world now, which is pretty awesome. And we have some other sort of crab that looks to be a little smaller, but I'm not exactly sure what species it is. Again, we have another, I believe, species of deep sea rockfish. And then these last three are ones that uh, puzzle my mind. And this over here, I am not exactly sure what that is. It could be a species of crab, or it could even be sea spiders, which, yes, sea spiders do exist, but I believe they only get around a couple inches or so, and they live literally at the bottom of the ocean, so you'll probably never see one at your local beach. But these do seem to be a bit translucent with hints of pink, so that's going to be super awesome to see what it is. Over here, I'm not exactly sure what this is, it could possibly be a deep sea starfish of some sort as in the new york times article they did have uh photos of them carrying in some deep sea starfish species i don't think i saw anything that looks like that but pretty interesting to kind of just see what that could be but the thing about this tank that captivates me the most is that from what we can see in this picture there are going to be sharks of some sort in here and i'm not exactly sure what kind of shark it says but i think from the picture those look like dogfish which aren't the i guess the coolest thing um they're very common in aquariums but really cool nonetheless i could be wrong of course because the name doesn't really fit what i'm thinking but it really is going to be super cool to see how all these creatures cohabitate in this tank and looking around we can see a lot more um oh there's another gallery i didn't even see the Imper interpretive station uh this over here there's a circular tank over here um not exactly sure what this is but from what we can see it looks like the giant isopod which another creature that's not commonly displayed but you can see it from time to time at public aquariums although i don't think that's what's being displayed in this circular tank but very interesting to see now one thing i did notice in this picture which i didn't notice the first time i did notice the second time though but i didn't really think much of it but now going over these pictures for a third time this is really hyping me up and this is under the picture or I guess the painting of, well, is, is it a painting? I'm not really sure of the kind of octopus that is going to be housed in the Muddy Plains. This is the vampire squid. And if you didn't know, during the opening weekend, I think it's the opening weekend or the opening week of the Tentacles exhibit, Monterey Bay Aquarium actually had the first ever vampire squid on display in the world for that either week or weekend i'm not exactly sure which it was but possibly i they do release all their deep sea creatures after a period of time but possibly they might have cracked the code on how to house one permanently and i didn't think much of the sign because i was thinking that oh it's probably just another kind of display for the led rooms but as we can see in some of these pictures that doesn't look like the case and from what we can see in the muddy plains and the sea mounts this looks like a sign that they have made for showing off the different creatures in the tank and 
specifically here it says it came from the deep and it says this deep sea cephalopod so implying that possibly it's in the tank somewhere i don't know i am super duper excited and i don't want to get my hopes up too high just because it we don't really know that much yet besides the potential creatures for this exhibit i mean for the gallery and what the tanks are going to look like but everything about this sign coming from the clues of the exhibit itself i mean from the gallery itself looks like that we might see the possible return of the vampire squid and that is just gonna blow my mind away because this time i can actually get video of it and photos and holy cow as you can hear i'm bending back in my chair but holy cow if we do get the return of the vampire squid this is going to be in my opinion possibly the greatest aquarium gallery in the world and literally the animals in here that we can see are already making it that because some of these have never been on display before and to have a gallery full of deep sea animals from the midnight zone is amazing in itself but if we could have return the return of one of the most popular of the midnight zone creatures that is going to be insanely huge and i'm going to be super excited to see it so with my hope Leaving my hopes at a reasonable level, let's move on to the fourth category. So when could we possibly see this exhibit open? Now, taking some factors from when Viva Baja was closed down in, I think it was August or September of 2019, to the factors of COVID and how long it takes to tear down the exhibit, we could possibly see this exhibit opening within the months of possibly may to oh i'm sorry not may anywhere from july to possibly october and the reason i say this is because well the set date they wanted to and i think they're still aiming for is 2022 from the membership magazine i got in 2018 and from the new york times article it seems like they're still set on opening it in 2022. And considering that they are making a ton of new enclosures and even the room layout is going to be very different. They do this every time they have a new gallery. And I believe they already have some of the animals actually uh, kept in the back rooms of the aquarium uh that are going to be on display so but then again it takes time to collect these animals and it also takes time to adjust them to surface pressure uh since if you do this too fast you run into all sorts of problems with swim bladder buoyancy and sometimes even death so it takes a long process to acclimate them to surface uh pressure but if if this in my mind this theory is true because the georgia aquarium uh actually opened their 2020 expansion project last year a lot of people thought covid was going to make these projects kind of delayed for a super long time and this was on the i think the buzzfeed video of them taking care of the whale sharks uh during quarantine or it was the expansion video that they had i think in 2018 or 2019 supposedly a volunteer explained how since covid had shut everything down and there were no people at the aquarium besides the construction workers and the biologists this actually sped up the process of the exhibit and if this implies towards you know and if this carries over as well to the Monterey Bay Aquarium, uh, the Monterey Bay Aquarium, because I believe Gavin Newsom also has a, I think it's a lockdown right now, so no one can go to like zoos or aquariums in California. But I think he's 
being recalled for that right now. But anyways, I'm not going to jump into politics because I don't really like discussing about politics. We could possibly see this exhibit opening anywhere between March to June. And the reason I say it is because if this has sped up the process with no interruptions from the public, then this is going to speed up the process of how everything is done. And membership wise, because they do allow for these new exhibits about a month in advance for members to come at a specific time and actually have a preview of the exhibit. We could possibly, if with my first idea of July to October, we could possibly see members getting an early access look at the month of June or May. And if it is from March to June, then we could possibly see maybe even February of that month being when members can actually see the exhibit for the first time. So with that coming to an end, we have concluded the discussion and the predictions and theories about the world's first large scale deep sea gallery of the Midnight Zone at the Monterey Bay Aquarium opening up in 2022. One year away, one year away. I am super excited. Literally when I was probably seven or eight and the first time I went to the Monterey Bay Aquarium, I was drawing drawings and thinking of all sorts of crazy ideas of how the Monterey Bay Aquarium could do something like this. And what do you know, nine years later, they are doing it. And I am super pumped about what this aquarium is going to be doing and what this exhibit beholds. And next year, I will be able to get my driver's license. But unfortunately, I don't think I can drive uh, over like cross state or can get a hotel room, unfortunately. But you will be seeing me at this exhibit, either opening weekend, members preview, something like that. You will definitely see me at this exhibit. And if I do go to the members preview, hopefully they'll let me be able to film and possibly even upload it early. But if not, definitely the day when the exhibit opens. But holy moly, this exhibit, if it meets to the standards that the Monterey Bay Aquarium has for their other exhibits, which will pretty much exceed those standards and what they're trying to do. Then again, in my opinion, this is going to be possibly the greatest exhibit slash gallery in the whole entire world that has ever been put on display. And I'm super excited. Again, things can change since this just this is just the preview of the exhibit layout and the different creatures that they're going to be having. But considering how they've already have drawings sketched up and different animals in different sections and whatnot, it looks like that everything we've seen in the article and the pictures look to be pretty much confirmed. And if it is all confirmed, plus a couple more additions that they're going to be sprinkling in, I am so excited for this and the Monterey Bay Aquarium is pretty much the place that I would really like to work at once I graduate college and it's things like this that really captivate me to work there and why it is my favorite aquarium ever. So with that out of the way, hopefully if somehow someone from the Monterey Bay Aquarium that is working on this new gallery sees this video, I really hope you enjoyed it and enjoyed my theories and predictions for this exhibit. And maybe you can give me some hints at my Instagram, which I'll put on screen right now. <clears throat> but anyways, if you did enjoy my predictions and theories for this exhibit, please tell me down in the comments below. Please consider subscribing as well and liking the video and as well sharing it around. Because this, this gallery has not gotten enough attention, I believe, as I've seen pretty much no one talk about it besides this New York Times article and the Monterey Bay Aquarium's Instagram page. And that's really about it. So this is going to be a super awesome exhibit to see. And with that out of the way, my name is Northwest Fishkeeping signing out. And hopefully I'll see everyone next week because I might be getting my hands on a pretty rare, uh, for now, uh, invert slash coral combo uh, this is Sunday, so stay tuned for that. And now with that out of the way, I'll see everyone in the next one.